Hi, this is Paul Dye for the Metal Magic video series. Today, let's talk about shop safety. Hi, today's topic is shop safety, which I know is boring because we all grew up knowing how not get to get hurt. But the truth is, a lot of people don't grow up in shops. They didn't take shop back in high school because all of the other guys got to take that class. So let's talk just a little bit about the simple things we need to do to make sure that we are healthy and in one piece so that when you finish your project airplane, you can actually fly it. All right. Probably the two biggest things that I like to think about are protecting your eyes and your ears because those are things the FAA is going to check. So safety glasses and hearing protection. Now one of the things I like about safety glasses, I've got bifocal lenses, but I'm old enough that I can't actually see up close with a bifocal, so I end up taking my glasses off, putting them up on my head. Now I don't have any protection at all. So I like a pair of safety glasses that literally wraps around and touches my cheek because that way I'm really getting protected from flying debris, which is what they're all about anyways. So if you're, if you're like me and you don't need glasses to see up close where you're working, try and find some safety glasses that'll just really, really sit in tight and make sure you keep them clean. Um, make sure that when they get scratched, buy new ones. They're not expensive, right? Matter of fact, this set came with this set of hearing protection, which is actually Bluetooth. So not only does it give you good hearing protection, but you can actually link it to your phone and listen to whatever you want to listen to while you're working in the shop. And the safety glasses came along free. Right? So hearing protection, because the machines are loud, uh, riveting is loud, cutting is loud, and you might not think about it because you're only using a bandsaw for 10 seconds, but you're going to use it a thousand times for 10 seconds. And over that time, you can do accumulative damage, right? So use that, use these, and then make sure that you, uh, that you think about keeping your hands and, and, and other body parts out of the line of fire. Make sure you're not drilling into things. Okay, so what should you wear in your shop? Well, a lot of that is going to depend upon your climate. Are you wearing shorts? Are you wearing short sleeve shirts, long sleeve shirts, sweatshirts, long pants? Wear what's comfortable. The thing to make sure that you don't do is don't wear loose clothing, something that can have strings or anything that could get caught in moving machinery because it will get caught. You'll get something wrapped up in a, uh, in a, uh, a drill bit, you'll get wrapped up in a, in a saw blade, and now you're really going to be in danger because you're going to get sucked into that moving piece of machinery. And believe me, you cannot move fast enough to not get hurt. So think about that. Uh, gloves. I like to wear protective gloves when I'm working close to something that can cut me. But at the same time, machinists know never to wear gloves around rotating machinery because the glove can get caught and you can get sucked into the machine. So you want to think very carefully about when you wear gloves and where you don't wear gloves and make a good trade-off and think about what you're doing. And that think about what you're doing is the real key to shop safety. Don't just charge in without thinking about how you're going to protect yourself from anything, including, by the way, chemicals. Um, when I was young, we basically bathed in gasoline and oil. If you were changing the oil in your car, you let it drip all over you. It didn't make any difference. You could wash it off. We now know that some of that long-term exposure is dangerous. In the shop, you're going to use acetone, you're going to use mineral spirits, you're going to be using white gas, you're going to be using all sorts of different chemicals during the time you're building an airplane. That stuff has long-term effects and it can be absorbed through the skin. There's really no excuse nowadays for not wearing nitrile gloves. They're cheap, you can buy them by the, by the thousand, and you, you use them and you throw them away and you put another pair on. Um, and, and, they, and they have the added benefit of that when you go inside for dinner, you peel them off and you don't have to take 10 minutes of scrubbing to get your hands clean. So wear the gloves, make sure that if you get some kind of exposure to the chemistry on your skin, that you rinse it off as quick as you can. So the bottom line with shop safety really is common sense. Some people say common sense isn't that common. I really do believe that it is. If something looks dangerous, it probably is. There are also things that may not look dangerous but are. So you want to step back, think about what it is you're about to do, and go through the whole process and say, not just how do I make this part, but how could I get hurt making this part? 
right? And think about where you could get pinched and think about where you could get cut. Um, a lot of materials that we use have very sharp edges. Until you can break them or deburr them, you can really get, let, get badly sliced. So use your common sense. If it looks dangerous, it is. And think about the things that might not look dangerous, but could be. Okay, so now that we've got the shop safety out of the way, let's go ahead and start talking about how in the world you build airplanes out of metal. We're gonna do that throughout this series. Follow us along. I think you're gonna learn some interesting things and, and hopefully you'll have some fun doing it. So just to make sure you don't miss any episodes of this video series, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll get notifications when new parts come out. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Aircraft Spruce for sponsoring the series and we'll see you next time.